truly, truly, truly blessed by your presence here and know that God's been working on your life. And we are excited to hear you articulate that and to share that with us. Why are you here today? So you've been here before and we did this for commissioning, right? You're here today just so that we can connect and kind of make sure that we're all playing in the same, on the same field in the same game so that we can kind of help you present your best gospel. And so I'm going to start with Brother Billy. There you go, sir. Tim, I appreciate it. Good to see everybody this morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, as Tim said, you know, we've been together before. We've seen you in previous interviews and uh, uh, been around some of your residency stuff and things like that. And so um, we are uh, hopefully somewhat familiar with one another. So uh, briefly today, I just want to take a moment and say again, welcome. Uh, we're looking forward to the interviews. I've handed you a sheet. Many of you that are current residents got the sheet back at the residency retreat. It just tells you about some dates and some other things. Uh, instead of going over uh, each of the areas, myself this morning, we have the great opportunity to hear from all three of the room conveners. And so you'll actually hear from uh, the convener of the theology room and the worship and proclamation room and the call room this morning. So uh, I don't want to take up any more of their time. The only thing I do want to say is, um, we are now in the process of starting to schedule on-site interviews. And so members of the Board of Ordained Ministry have started signing up for your on-site interview. Those are to be conducted between tomorrow, now, and uh, the middle of February. And so part of what you've got to do is work with board members. So uh, I'm going to invite you that during the meet and greet, there's a sheet over there that has uh, who has signed up for your interview. And I'd like for you to try to connect with them during the meet and greet, at least one of them, and say, how can we begin to exchange information uh, so that we can start getting this scheduled? You can let them know these are the best dates and times, and they can start kind of doing the same with you. So just make sure you start that process so that we can uh, get that done. Uh, you don't actually interview until the first week of March, so we've got a little bit of time in January and February to do these. But if you're eager and everybody on your... Uh, on-site uh, team is eager, then y'all can do that in November, December as well. So uh, without further ado, let's turn this over and let you hear from the room conveners. We're going to start with theology, and this is uh, Dr. Stan Copeland. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone. Okay, I have to put it in the box or something. Okay. Is that what you mean? It's good to see everyone. I hope everyone has this page. I think you've seen it before, actually, uh, because we've been using the uh, same page for several years now. Um, it does have both the commissioning and the ordinance uh, uh, sections to it, but there's a lot of things that is in common. So I'm just going to go through it, just to make sure that, uh, uh, that we're all on the same page, and then we'll entertain any questions that you might have about the theology room. But first, I'd like to say that, of course, this time you're coming through, you're going to be dealing with, uh, or we're going to be dealing with what is effectiveness and your effectiveness. You know, you've been in the process for uh, several years now, and uh, and so uh, it's different than when you were coming up for commissioning, which was uh, more or less testing your readiness and your ability to um, uh, to, uh, to deal theologically with different matters, and it's the same in that regard, except for we're actually wanting you to integrate more and to talk more about your uh, uh, effectiveness and, and your practice of ministry, I think, in general. So we, we really want you to know that we're praying for you and we're pulling for you. I, I want you to hear that loudly and clearly. Unfortunately, we, we sense as a theology room that you come in there a little tense. And, <laughs> and what, the, the word on the street is that, you know, it, theology is a, uh, is, is a tough room. We're really not. We're really... Uh, or really, <laughs> uh, in, in there. Um, but but we do want you to know we we are pulling for you. We we would love for you to be able to uh, present yourself in the very best way. We we try as much as we can to reduce that stress factor. I really try it when I come out and meet you before you come into the room. Um, we want you to know you're really talking to peers, and and we're we're talking for what is it, 30 minutes or so, a little more than 30 minutes, um, about your paper and your work and your ministry. And so we're, we're really trying to put you at as much peace as we can. So, uh, and I know you come in there wanting to be peaceful, but it's kind of hard. 
Uh, but if we know we're all on the same page, both desiring peace, maybe we can get there a little easier. So that's what we are trying to do with you, um, and we want you to know that. And what we do in preparation for your interview is this, and I think you all know this, you've been in this long enough, but um, we've prayed for all of you. Uh, we've had assignments to pray for all of you. And that half of us will have read your paper. That's no different. Now, some overachievers read all the papers, but most just read <laughs> their assigned papers. And that means that all of us will uh, have met to discuss your written work. Even those of us who hadn't read it uh, will be brought up to speed by those who have read it. Uh, when we get into the interview room, uh, the way we operate in our room is anybody can ask a question whether you read the material or not. Uh, you know, we don't uh, come at this in any kind of rote manner. We want to, it to be more of a conversation. So you may say something that someone might want to get more clarity from you on and push you a little bit on that. So our responsibility will to be to keep the interview on a time schedule and move the interview along. And you know how that works with our own timing of ourselves. And so, um, you know, that's, that's the way that goes. Some of this is so repetitive for you uh, who are coming up for coordination interviews. So what will you do in preparation for your interview? This is probably the most important reminder to you. You need to write a good, thoughtful, professional paper. Um, I think we do have people in the theology room who are really looking for this paper not to be sloppy, uh, to be well done, to be one that you would hope to turn in uh, and, and, uh, and really know that you've given the work and dotted the I's and crossed the T's. And let one or two of your colleagues review your work and assist you with editing it, okay? Uh, I'm not good at editing, so I always need to have this. It, I, might, I might need three people to look at it just to comfort me if I was turning in a paper such as this. But don't fail to do that. And don't do it the last week, you know, don't before you have to turn it in. Do it ahead of time so that you can uh, make sure that that paper is well prepared. And this is um, another thing we encourage a lot, and that is mock interviews with colleagues. Um, this has really proven to be helpful, and I know many of you have done that, and you know how helpful it is. We want to encourage that. Having someone accompany you seems to be a good choice for some, and we just remind you of that. Uh, do what you can to relax and calm yourself um, so that you uh, present your very best. Um, and if you get hung up on a question or feel you're struggling, uh, be ready to move on to the next question. We may just say, you know, let's stop right there. Let's move on to the next question. We may come back and deal with that. Uh, you know, we don't want a situation where somebody gets so frustrated in the midst of the interview that they are not able to present them their best self uh, because of a question that may, uh, may feel like they you know, they didn't, you didn't answer as well as you, you should have or could have. Uh, so let's go down to number six. This is the measures regarding ordin uh, the ordination candidates, the articulation of the faith with passion and relevance, particularly related to your current context of ministry. This is really what we're looking for. I mean, we know you know the, the, the theology. Tell us how that theology applies to what you do. Tell us the integration of that theology into your practice of ministry. And the ability to integrate the theology and practice in ministry, I just spoke to that. Demonstrate um, a demonstration of growth in theology, uh, theological understanding and ability to discuss uh, the development. You know, this is, to be able to be introspective and to also uh, to uh, critique the way that you have grown. This is always something that I think strengthens an, ord uh, an ordination candidate's interview to say, you know, I've grown in this way. You know, this is something that I've, uh, I've seen develop in my theology through my practice of ministry. And then recognize and name the work of Christ in the world and connect relevant events and to the issues of your theology, theological understanding. You know, don't fail to address the prophetic nature of your ministry and how you see that prophetic uh, dynamic uh, being practiced in your pastoral ministry. Uh, that's something that we'll also look, look for. And continue the biblical and historical grounding in your discussion of the, of the questions. Um, you, you know, I think that it, it's one thing to write and to, um, uh, to basically reference historical and biblical understandings. 
It's another thing to be able to talk about those and to articulate those. So if you're going to write about them, um, know what you're writing about so you can talk about it too. And, and um, so that's really kind of the, uh, uh, the, the ground rules for what we, we see as, as for making for a successful interview. And again, that's what we're all looking for, is uh, for you to have a successful interview to present yourself in the very best way. All right? Uh, Billy, I, are we to entertain questions now, or are we going to continue to go through? I, I think we're going to go to the other rooms, and then we'll take questions on all of them. All right, okay. very good. All right. Next. Um, hi. Good to see you all today. I'm Anna Hosen butler and um, I'm the convener for the Worship and Proclamation Room. I'm just going to go through some things. I sort of um, didn't make a handout for you today. <laughs> it's all up here. But I will put these thoughts together and make it available. Is it okay through Marsha? And I, is our plagiarism policy as well available for you? Is it online? It is not online. I can address it um, when we okay. okay, okay. And I can get copies of that many today. Um, so, first of all, uh, we again, echoing what Stan said, we're delighted to have you and to be with you during this process. It's our high honor to do that. And um, I want you to know, as he uh, already said, that we don't do gotchas. We try very hard not to do gotchas. There are no, there's nobody in our room that's going to try to lead you into a trap or anything like that. Theologically, everybody's on your side. So just please let that put your mind at ease. We are looking for effectiveness in terms of proclamation. One of the things we know very clearly is that, especially with elders and deacons, there are very different forms of proclamation. Primarily we'll be looking at sermons, but we understand that not everybody preaches every week. Sometimes you have to struggle to preach at all in your context. Um, so we'll also really love it when you can bring us another alternative form of proclamation that we can examine with you and hear um, how you presented it, why you did it, what, uh, what that was about, and what you learned from it, and how you were able to integrate your theology into that. So if you're worried about the preaching process, don't, if that is not your, your gig, okay? Because we're very open to that. Um, again, the key word is integration. We want to know um, how you, at this juncture, can integrate your Wesleyan theology into the mission and ministry that you have been called to do in your context and in your mission field. Regarding the sacraments, we want to know again, if you're Wesleyan, if you can articulate your understanding, our understanding of grace and how that is lived out and how that is lived out that you see through the sacramental um, uh, opportunities you have uh, in ministry, how that is lived out both in the community, in your mission field, and particularly uh, in terms of, of liberation, okay? Um, we, as I said a little while ago, we do have a plagiarism outline, a policy that we developed a couple of years ago and if, if I will get copies and have it available for you back there. Just so you know, um, just don't. Okay, just don't. Um, whatever your version of proclamation is, particularly uh, sermonizing, just make sure it's your own. Okay? I know it's tempting for us to go online sometimes. Just don't do it. Uh, it's, not, it's not you. Okay? And what we want to see is you claiming the goodness and the good news of our Lord. Regarding sermons, um, and this goes for any form of proclamation, we want to hear the central message. We want to see that you've done your, your homework, your exegetical homework. We do not need an academic <clears throat> treatise, okay? But we want to know that you've done the work you needed to do uh, to, to come to where you are in terms of your, your word. We want to see form and substance. We want to see language and Im imagery. And of course, we want to see um, through the videos your delivery. So I think that's it. There are other members of the room here. Um, I'm going to ask you all to stand. John, uh, Paul, Linda, 
Cassie, Chris, where's Chris? Um, and Billy. So later, as we will have some time to interact, if you have more questions about worship and proclamation, please feel free to see any one of us. Okay? Have I left anything out, guys? Okay. My name is Henry Lester. I'm uh, wanting us to convene the call room. And uh, we have a reputation opposite of what Stan said about the theology room. We're the fun room. Okay. Uh, so you can come in. Uh, when you come to see us, you can just take a deep breath and say, okay, this is my chance to just tell this group who I am. That's what we're really looking for is who are you? Uh, you should have a copy of this um, multi-page thing here. I just put them on there. I'm uh, proud to say that most of the members of our committee are here. So if you're on the call room, would you please stand up so people can see that? Thank you all. Okay. So um, anyway, the names are on there. So if you need any help, we're uh, available to talk, uh, consult, whatever you need. Seriously. Seriously. People don't believe that. Well, some of them do take advantage of it. Uh, there's some in the room that have done that. So the next page on there is um, books, uh, paragraphs out of the Book of Discipline that I would just encourage you to be familiar with, uh, maybe have a talking knowledge of those, uh, not only for our room, but for the other rooms, and just for your own benefit. These uh, cover everything there is to do about what, you know, what, what, you, what is the church expecting of you if you're going to become an ordained elder or, or deacon in, in our church. Um, it's very well written. It's not hard to read. And I would just, if you haven't read that, you need to. So go to the third page, uh, ordination interviews. So when we have an interview, uh, our team has a lot of pre-work that we do. And a couple of us do a lot of the stuff we do prior to. Uh, Gretchen back here is the person who is dealing with the medical reports. So if there's something that uh, we see on uh, medical reports, all this, by the way, is confidential. Nobody sees it but Gretchen. But uh, Gretchen gets copies of things that you've had, the conversations with doctors, and looks at uh, things like if you're taking medicine about something, what, what's going on there, why? Uh, he's continuing to do that, by the way. Uh, Pat Deal, who's not able to be here with us this morning, Pat is the one who looks at your psych report. And you're going to see, I'm going to mention just in a minute, but we will ask you about if you're taking your psych report seriously. What have you done that's on there that I guarantee you we will ask you this. So please come prepared with an answer for that. Um, I talk about financial stuff, and I do that all pre, kind of like Gretchen does, I do it pre-meeting. So we probably will not touch on your financial stuff in, the con in our room conversation. If there's something going on with you that I need to know about and I don't already know, uh, please come talk to me about that. I will see your credit reports again, uh, so we'll see what's going on with that. So you can see all the things that we will do prior to that. We'll see your recommendations. Uh, we will see the results of your on-site meeting. Uh, transcripts from school, we want to make sure that you've taken all the required courses and such. So then you get into some of the things we're going to ask you about. And we're not going to probably ask you about your call story, even though it says on there we might, but uh, probably not. We've been through that before. We probably have heard it once, maybe more than once with some. One of the big deals is, and you might make a little star by these. These are the ones I'm going to say that we will ask you about. And one is your Making Disciples Project. We want to hear what you've done, why you did it, what were the results. And by the way, the results don't have to be positive. It could be a total flop and failure. But we want to know what did you learn from it, what did your church get out of it, what did, you know, how did this happen, uh, what was your process for going through this, how did you evaluate whether it was successful or not. We want to hear about that. The other thing on that page is what have you learned since commissioning? What have you learned about yourself? What have you gained? What have you, um, have you changed your leadership style in any way? Um, what have you learned about yourself? What, what have you figured out a strength or a weakness that you have? I need to stay away from this. I need to do more of this. Those are things that we want you to be able to talk about when uh, you get into the room with us. Turn the page. Um, example of how you work with laity. And again, this is a little bit of a leadership kind of thing. What's your man management style? What is your style? How do you empower lady? I mean, when you go into a church, there's one of you and there's tens, hundreds, dozens of others. And your job is, in my opinion, one of your most important jobs is to 
get those people engaged in what's going on in your church. Um, how do you motivate them? Um, so we, we will ask you about that. They're also on there engaged in justice ministry and inclusivity. We will ask you for a story. Uh, tell us about how you've engaged in some sort of justice ministry in your current setting. How have you engaged in something that shows that you understand what inclusivity means even. Um, and again, we're not looking for dramatic, dramatic things. Just some short little vignette story that you've done, how you've engaged and done these things that we as the church think that's important for you to be able to do. Uh, if you read down there, it also says, have you taken seriously, I'll say this again, recommendations of your psych report. We will ask you about that. And then down there, one of the things the bishop just talked to us, and he says this every time we meet in a, in a forum like this, if you're going to be an elder, will you agree to itinerate? We will ask you about that. And we might ask you about why, and what are your limitations, and what's the theology about that? What's the benefit for doing that? So we will ask you about that, that, that question. There's one on there that uh, we sometimes get to, and that's the role of deacons and elders. It is always disappointing to me to find out that people get to this point and can't differentiate what the two do. So uh, we have a gentleman in our group who always asks the question about that. Assuming he's there, uh, you will be asked about how do I differentiate What's the role of a deacon in a church, and what's the role of an elder in a church? Um, we should know by now, but we will probably. That's not a guarantee, but we'll probably ask you about that. If you go to the next page, uh, the next two pages, by the way, are the note forms that we use in there in our room to, yeah, as we're visiting with you, uh, where we take notes on that. So um, just so you, this is complete transparency. What are we going to ask? You can see it. It's right there. So uh, take a look at that. I can't, Stan made a comment about it when he spoke. I can't emphasize this enough as practice. Um, I know this is a, these are really stressful days when you're preparing for all this. You got all the other things that you do in your ministry setting. Uh, find some time to sit down with multiple people, I would suggest. Don't just do one big formal one. Multiple times, like I mentioned, the inclusivity, um, uh, justice ministry, talk with somebody, sit down and talk, tell them your story so you're ready to do that when you get there, that you're not trying to make it up. Think about it when you get into the room. Uh, you're not gonna do well if that's the case. So things that you've done, things about you've learned yourself, tell other people, write it down, be prepared. I mean, this is, in our room, this is what we're going to ask you. I mean, it's, it's that simple. This is, we only have 40 minutes. So we, we'd love to talk to you for three hours, and we could, by the way, but uh, we don't have that time. Stan also mentioned the, the time pressure that we're under to keep this thing rolling. Uh, so things are going to hit you really fast. And as the convener, sometimes I may cut you off, even as we're going through, because we have other things that we have to talk about. So anyway, so I'll be around for questions afterwards. And we're glad you're here, and I look forward to visiting with you in February, right? March. 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 Marsha Middleton, I'm the board ministry officer. Know most of everybody here. Um, so, wanted just to be sure everybody's aware, I put a, a sheet back in the back that was developed by Liz Lancaster, not by me. She does training documents very well. And so, that is your UM CARES instructions. If you are not yet up on UM CARES, you need to get that way right now very, very soon. So like call me Monday or today and we'll get you set up on that and ready to go and to access all of your documents. I know many of you have already done that. Um, what I need to tell you about the track this year is that it is a little different. Um, every year I'm trying to tweak and improve just a hair and make things a little bit more clear. clear. You have received um, a set of instructions in the email having to do with the track and I'm going to invite you to read the instructions and read the instructions in the track for each step. It's going to be really a problem if you don't because some of them have slightly different due dates. For instance, next week we have some due dates for um, persons who um, uh, need to turn in uh, reference 
the reference names and all of that, those are coming right up because it takes a while to get those processed. And just want you to be aware of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask, are, is anybody having any problems or questions right now about UMCARES? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, call me. I'm here for you. This is what I do this time of year. So I want to let you know I'm available to help in any way I can. Cool. Thank you, Marsha. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Billy just to deal with questions about anything. I want to remind you that we're going to have a few minutes out asking, what should I tell the candidates? This is what the bishop said. I know it's already been said, but I'm being a responsible steward with what I've been told to tell you. Get serious about itineracy. Um, the bishop even asked that I would get out a piece of paper and make you sign it to be sure that you understood um, what itineracy is. First bit of advice from the bishop to me to you. Second bit of advice, I asked candidates yesterday at clergy retreat while we sat around the breakfast table, what is it you think that I need to tell everyone? What's the best bit of advice? And around the table, my daughter was first to speak up, everyone else chimed in, get your paperwork done early enough so that someone else has time to read it enough to get back to you with a response. Cool. Third bit of advice says, come back, they say, when you have someone read your paperwork or you interview it, do it with people that don't like you because yeah. they will be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple minutes here. Let's see what questions you have. I'm going to ask Anna and Henry and Stan. Stan's still here. There he is. Uh, if y'all just to be available, what questions do you have? What do you want to ask? <coughs> yes, Kim. We asked this earlier, Marcia. Are references from our theological schools? Do we need if if we have the ones from commissioning? Can we use those? Because those will be the same people. Mm -hmm. Or do we need to give new names? Okay. So the question was about um, theological school recommendation. Notice that's a recommendation, Sorry. not a reference, and they are different. It's yeah. a different form. So on theological school recommendations, you have to have two. And if you came through in this conference, we probably already have yours on file. However, um, because you did not come through last year, you came through previous to that, we have discovered several of those on occasion for folks are missing and we think what happened was they were accidentally shredded um, after the interview process so let me know and I will check some of you I have already talked to about this and gotten information back to you about about your uh, uh, documents but let me know and, and I will definitely double check okay thanks Brian you have a question no that was it I just want to know who didn't like me but. <laughs> Everybody likes you, Brian. Well, I was I just want you to know, so very quickly, that one of the things that's on the sheet I gave you is a reminder that your paperwork is due uh, a week later than the commissioning uh, folks, but your paperwork is due on your submittal date is December 13th. You're saying, how do I know that? I know that because that's Bryant Phelps' birthday. Okay, so your paperwork is due on Bryant Phelps' birthday. That's my birthday, too. That's correct. <laughs> So get yours done so you and I can go out to lunch that day. So that would be great. All right? Uh -huh. All right. What other questions? Millie, I yes. Just to, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just have copies of the pleasure policy made, and they're on the back table. So just feel free to take them. Okay? okay. Thanks. Thanks. Anna said don't plagiarize. Jack. <laughs> I don't have a question, but I've got an answer. <laughs> Here, Jack. You got a, if you got a really important answer, then say it in the mic. Well, so. It, it, it's really quite simple. It came up last year. Uh, we assume, because you're in this room right now, you know your theology. Your theology is rock solid. We know that. But when it comes to the next interview, it's important that you remind us that you know that theology, but only briefly spend the rest of the time telling us about how that theology has been implemented in your ministry, okay? Uh, guard against spending your entire time talking about that theology again. Okay. All right. Good work. Jack said we know, but we need to be reminded. Thank you. And then want to get on to the, 
effectiveness of your theology and the practice of ministry. Yeah, what else? What other questions? Yes, check it. So uh, in my sermon on John, uh, I utilize a video clip. Um, I don't know exactly how, uh, what would be the best way you recommend to integrate that into what we submit? Okay. I can help with that. So for your video, video, and any video clips, there is a way to upload a URL. And so the URL, where it says upload the URL, you check that and it will give you access to your um, documents in your computer and you upload it like that just with it. Um, so you can have multiple uploads. Okay. Now on a non-URL, it's going to say Amazon 3 or something. That means anything that's not that's a, ch a change this year, and that happened in the software, not with me. So it just means that we use Amazon Web Storage to store all of our data, and that's why it says that. So any other document, PDF or whatever, is, is called an Amazon document. So like in the manuscript, do I, do I just put like asterisk video clip here? Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is great. All right, what else? Wow. Yeah, okay. So um, sometimes in paperwork, when you print it from one Word computer to another, it can be, I understand the importance of uploading it, a document in Word so that y'all can run it through software for plagiarism, but can we do a second document that's a PDF file that makes printing easier? I do. I sure. Nobody can make I don't think I used it though. I think I used the Word version of it. Right now the policy asks for Word. So I'm going to stick with that to make it fair for everybody. Let me look next year and see. Um, there's a way we can expand the plagiarism software package that will allow us to run PDFs as well. We just haven't paid that money yet or done that. So let me see and because I don't want to make it comp, I want to make it as simple as you can. But I understand Sometimes there are gaps, and you know it does funky things. And I think we've we've all worked with Word. We know what it looks like. Okay. So. Okay. Yes, Brian. Follow-up question. Uh, as far as the on-site uh, interview, I yes. know you mentioned that we need to schedule that with specific people. But right. do you know who those people are for each. Yeah. Person? So there's sheets on the back table now. Oh, when you when it. we get ready to have the break here in just a minute, go back and look and find your name and find the people that are on there. So all of us, I think, you have at least three now. And uh, you probably, you may have four. You don't have to connect with all four of those people. Just connect with one somebody who can start to get that. And then once I hear that you've got an on-site schedule, I'll send out to everybody in the next couple of weeks uh, the instructions. Uh, the on-sites are really pretty simple in terms of, the, uh, of, of how they're done. But uh, we do want to get that information to you as well. Okay. Yeah. One thing I forgot to say when I was talking about worship proclamation is um, some of you preach from outlines, right? And that's fine, but we really, really, really love to have a transcript, including even though it's videoed, it's really um, a manuscript. Did not what I say? Oh, I've been watching the news too much. Okay. <laughs> a manuscript. Okay. So, um, thank you. I had a couple questions. Sarah. So what are the parameters of, of those, because as we've developed relationships in the past few years, of those who have to recuse themselves from the room when we enter? Oh, in, in the actual interview? Uh -huh. All right, so there's really uh, three uh, people that need to recuse themselves. If you have an immediate family member that is on the board of Ordain Ministry, ministry, uh, if a staff person who you serve with in that church is on the board of Ordain ministry, and if you have an immediate formalized mentor, okay, now if you've got just informal mentors, that that's, you know, we've all have different people that we connect with and there are mentors, they're fine to be in the room, but it's those three things, it's those three groups of people that we ask to recuse themselves from both being in the interview and in the voting. Yep. 
Ashley. I have two questions. Yes. The first is for Marcia. Marcia, we were uh, questioning uh, several of us in the group of who is our, I believe it says your primary mentor. It asks you for that name and then asks for an unofficial mentor. Is Who is that primary okay, mentor? Okay, the primary mentor would be your mentor group or your residency group mentor leader person. Marty Sober, right. Marty that says who that would be. Um, if Oh, okay. Was that from Cammie? That was they didn't your coaches. Residency. I've heard both. Yeah. So that's why we need We need to clarify that. So I, I am not sure. I will try to find that out and get that back to you all. Mm -hmm. so, so if you're further along in time wise than that, yep. who would it be? You would pick somebody that you trust to be that person for you. Yes. My second question was, several people got up and had different, I don't know if this is really that important, but different times for each room, since I'm, this is my first time in the right. conference. Are, every room is 35 minutes? Yes, every room is 35 minutes, and then there's a 15-minute break while each room does time right after your interview. And so you, you have an interview, 35 minutes, you take a 15-minute break, then you go in the second room, third room, and then it's about an hour to an hour and half for deliberation that you're around after that. So normally, if an interview morning interview starts at uh, 8.30, we are not really done with you probably till about 12.15. The only thing I will tell you is um, I will send you probably in late January, early February, the schedule for the interviews in terms of what day and what time. If you have a particular need with that, please just send me that. I mean, occasionally somebody has an out-of-town commitment or something and they need to be interviewed on Monday. I will try to accommodate that as best as possible. Uh, the other thing is, is that sometimes I get information from folks that say, you know, I just, in the morning I'm terrible, I need to be in the afternoon. Uh, or somebody will say, I'm really fresh in the morning, I need to be able to have it. I'll try, I will try to accommodate that as best we can. Uh, but, you know, don't, don't put me in the too horrible of a situation <laughs> regarding it. We'll do what we can to be able to help accommodate yeah. that. So, okay, anything else? We'll probably time to bug out and have some time for um, refreshment and fellowship. Cool. Chance? Yep. I have another answer. Great, Jack. <laughs> I love your answer. <laughs> I'll be real quick with this. Uh, every one of you, I believe, every one of you, I believe, received a letter following your last interview. And sometimes there are concerns and we will look at those letters before you walk in the room and we will ask you about whether or not you have fulfilled those requests. Good answers, Jack. Thank you. All right. So um, to everyone in the room, my goodness, we are blessed with this incredible burden that God has blessed us in ways that dropped us to our knees. And now it's just about the articulation and the expression of that in a Wesleyan tradition. And so we are just thankful to have all this in common. And I mean that lay folks and clergy and candidates alike. And so we share that together. Um, I want to remind you and say all that warm, mushy stuff because I love you all dearly. But at about 11 o'clock, I'm going to say, would you get out of here? And it'll be because we need to start the next group. And I just didn't want you to be offended or feel rushed if I just start pushing you out the door. All right? So I wanted to go with that. All right. Um, let